and welcome to another episode of Somewhat Accurate History, a podcast where we vaguely remember the history of various countries. Apparently, Wales is not a country. Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of the Warring States, or should I say, our current political climate. Am I right? Yikers. A wooga, a wooga. Gary, I'm a shock shock now. (laughs) Gary, woo, yeah, yeah, Gary. It's Gary. (laughs) Okay, Alex, I'm I'm done ruining your podcast. Sorry, I I just just live uh, Gary, Gareth, Reynolds, live rent free in my head. Honestly. All right, so, when we last left off our heroes, in air quotes, Oda Nobunaga just got his back stabbed by his general, Akechi Mitsuhide. Now everything is fucked. Nobunaga is dead, his son is dead, and Yasuke is fucking just either dead or went back to being a slave. Who knows? He's gone. Basically, everyone's fucking out of here. So now, where the fuck is Ayasu at? Well, you see... You might, you might have forgotten because we did this like fucking like three or four weeks ago. But yeah, yeah they were, here, let's give me give me a quick recap of like where we started. We'll just sum it up really quick because oh, it's been cool. like some time. So we'll, we'll from the top real, real goddamn quick, you know, hit the important parts. Well, OK, she just betrayed Mitsu, uh, Mitsuhide, just betrayed Oda Nobunaga. Everyone's fucking dead. Ayasu still on vacation. He's just chilling out, and Hideyoshi is currently still sieging a castle, because this all started when Hideyoshi asked for backup at, uh, on a siege. Hideyoshi is the one sieging the castle, I should point out. He's on the offensive. That's how this all started. Okay. Because, you know, Nobunaga said, hey, uh, Akechi, go over there, I'll meet you there too, but I'm going to stop in Kyoto real fast. And then Akechi just, you know, saw Oda Nobunaga was just, you know, very undefended in that little, in Hanoji Temple, and just decided to betray him right then and there. And that's how it all ended. He saw his opportunity, and then he's like, shit, this is my only chance. I guess I yeah. just gotta go for it. So Akechi killed Oda, and now is trying to take over the whole Oda clan for himself. That's the whole plan. Now, do people know that it was him, or do they not know what happened? They're going to. Remember, remember this, like, just happened. But the news is gonna start traveling fast. So, 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 so. Like I said, he's dead, everyone's gone, Iyasu's still on vacation. So Iyasu gets to learn the hard way that, oh shit, Oda's fucking dead, and also uh, his forces are coming for me now. Oh fuck, oh shit, what? Like, you know, he's just sitting there, you know, sitting back in his little fucking, like, ancient samurai fucking lounging chair, you know, smoking a fucking, like, cigarette, and his, his goons show up like, bro, we got a problem, what's up? Nobunaga's dead, he like, pff, like, spits his fucking, like, cigarette smoke everywhere, it's like, oh shit. So, <laughs> does problem. a spit take with the smoke? Yeah, just pff, oh shit. So, he's fucked because he's in a unique position of being surrounded, but not like officially, right? Like, they, they didn't move on his position yet, but like, there's Oda goons technically stationed all over the place, right? And he has no way of knowing because they don't have fucking phones or nothing. He has no way of knowing who's with, with Mitsuhide and who's not, right? He has no way to know where to go. But. He's got a secret weapon still. He's got motherfucking Hanzo still. We talked about Hanzo earlier. He's the legendary motherfucking ninja that basically every other ninja is fucking named after. So, Hanzo comes in, and he's a loyal motherfucker. Out of every other goddamn, like, samurai out there, and all this bullshit, the ninja always stick to whoever their first buyer is. They don't fucking backstab shit, which is a very weird, ironic thing that the ninjas are the loyal ones. But... Hanzo could just be like, hey, here's the boy. I'm going to sell him to you. Bye. Nope. He sticks with him. He has a secret ninja route that they use to uh, pass off like details and shit. So he sneaks Ayasu out of the fucking countryside. And they go right through Koga, which is the, the location that they were at. So they run off to a new location called Iga. Now, Iga has a whole other like clan of ninjas there. And those ninjas actually don't like Hanzo's ninjas. Right? They, they don't, but they don't okay. get it along, right? But the Iga clan actually like Ieyasu still, so they're going to help him out. Because a long, long time ago, when Oda was on his fucking rampage of just taking out everyone who could be a threat to him, like all those warrior monks and shit, he tried to get rid of the Iga ninjas. But 
fucking Iyasu comes in and says, no, fuck off. Vegan ninja clans are cool. They can stay. So because of that, they wanted to pay that respect back and help them out of there. Dig? Okay. So. It's like when you do the early game side. It's like when you uh, when you recruit Brad and Lisa to bring it back home for us gamers. Yeah, pretty much. So because he, Iyasu is once again saved by ninjas. So he's out and he's safe for now. He's way out of there, like, you know, hiding under fucking ground and shit. He's gone. Let's go back to Akechi here. So Akechi is feeling really full of himself now. He He's like, well, fuck Iyasu, but hey, fuck it, who cares? And he marches on all the way back to Kyoto. I want to point out, no, he did not help Hideyoshi. Hideyoshi's just stuck over there in that siege still. Akechi <laughs> just won and he's back to fucking the capital city. And he's like, well, all right, everybody, I did it. I've uh, pretty much taken everything over. I'm uh, basically Shogun now, right? Right? Yeah, okay, that's cool how it works. All right, let's set out to be the Shogun now. <sighs> I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so just like our current president Woo, gary yeah no one's gonna fucking get that uh, so anyway. yeah, only me this entire podcast is just jokes that only me or you will get like that fucking uh i i did that uh that world's fair thing and i put in a joke about a single video from the onion from a decade ago about a manatee being a being attacked in fucking sea world only me, you, and, like, one other person is going to get that. Fucking honestly. So, so, Akechi is over here in the capital city of Kyoto. Now, here's his first plan. He needs to make sure no one else could possibly get him off the throne. And I guess that's technically a smart idea. Uh, so he tries to find every single member, uh, every single potential heir that Oda had and just kill them all. Basically, he gets one of them and everyone else just runs away. So, he was very bad at this, and this is going to come and bite him in the ass later. He basically just makes himself look like a bad guy and lets every other potential enemy just get away for free and plan against him. So, so another thing he does, another really genius idea that Akichi does, is he gets, you know, the letters sent out. He's now the fucking supreme overlord of all of Japan and everything, and you guys have two options. You either submit to me, or you die. So, I want to take it back a little bit. Now, remember when Oda was in Kyoto? Do you remember what he did? Did he let his cat back into his room? No. <laughs> Oda made a big showing that he was not a conquering warlord, and he was helping restore the uh, the Shogun to his rightful place with, with Yoshiaki. But what Akechi did is Akechi sits his ass on the fucking big fucking skull throne and immediately makes himself the bad guy. And this is going to really bite him in the ass. So he starts sending letters out to everyone, threatening him to either do what he says or he'll go out there and kill him himself. After all, he does technically have the Oda clan. They're pretty big and strong right now. So one of those letters manages to get all the way back to Mr. Footman himself, Hideyoshi. Remember he was still stuck up there that whole time, sieging a fucking castle and never getting back up? Well, he's, yeah. he's still up there, and he gets the fucking, he, he gets the letter. So he's, you know, sitting there, chilling and grilling, you know, sieging his castle. He, he's gonna win. He, he's got this in the fucking bag. He doesn't even need the backup anymore. But then that letter shows up. He, he reads it and says, you know, Oda Nobunaga is dead. I'm Mr. Hideyoshi. I'm the Supreme Overlord. Submit to me or die, you stupid bastard. And Hideyoshi's like, oh, all right, all right. Well, fuck this guy. So he he he, he you know, gets his fucking scroll megaphone. Says everyone, everyone, stop, stop, stop. All right, listen, I gotta end the siege like right now and get back to Kyoto and, and kick that guy's ass. So just like, listen, if you guys just surrender, I'm just gonna let all of you go. I don't have time for this fucking killing shit. And they're like, uh, really? Like, well, I mean, I'm gonna kill the commander, but I mean, yeah, pretty much, just give me him and the castle, and like, you guys are good. And they all just like turn around to the commander, <laughs> grab him, throw him, throw him out to the fucking wolves, and just leave. So he gets the castle, you know, the, they kill the commander, and everyone just fucking goes home. And, you know, Hideyoshi gets out his horse, you know, cracks his fucking knuckles. All right, time to fucking kick this guy's ass. So Mitsuhide is, you know, chilling back. He's, he's Shogun. Oh, yeah, it feels great. It has been 13 entire days since Oda has died. It is, for reference, it's 1582, I should mention that. That's the year right now, right? We're, get, we're getting near the end of the 1500s. They're okay. almost just under two weeks since Oda is dead, and Mitsuhide has been officially Shogun for three of those days, and, you know, just, no, knock, knock, knock. Oh, shit, Hideyoshi's already here. Oh, fuck me. So, Mitsuhide is immediately surrounded in Kyoto, and he is fucked. 
He doesn't even have an army prepared yet. He he was talking that big shit that assuming people would take a while to get there and, and challenge him, right? But no, Hideo should get there fast. So Mitsu Hide bravely runs away, and while he's running away, he actually gets jumped by a bunch of random bandits and murdered. So the main villain is already dead. So you're probably wondering how the fuck does this keep going on for 20 more years? Well, it's funny you say that. So, so who take is it? Hideyoshi now is he the one that that inherits it? You'll see. Inherits the throne. You'll see. See, all the daimyo are trying to wondering that too. See, Akechi's dead now, and no one else is really making a claim for it just yet because you know, technically speaking, the Oda clan were in charge, and even with Akechi was still running the Oda clan at that point, you know, for the, for the for the two weeks that he was. So they naturally think, okay, well, let's just go get, like, uh, another fucking uh, Oda kid to do it. Like, Yoshiaki, by the way, is basically just out of the fucking picture. He's not dead, but he no one cares about him. Everyone kind of knows the Oda running the show right now, you know? So the first thing they go to is go to a man named Nobutada. That is, o- that is the oldest surviving son of uh, Nobunaga that's still around. Because they, because he tried to kill them all, and then like, it, so his strategy to take out the Oda kids is basically like they're all sitting there, and he just try, he takes like a big mallet and hits it down, and they just all scatter. But he got like one of them, right? Yeah, Oda had a lot of kids. Because remember, one of his kids is already dead from uh from the the Honoji. Then another one was just killed by a uh, fucking Mitsuhide. But there's still like four more to go. So they they got backup fucking sons for this shit. Nobutada is going to be in power, but wait a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I don't actually like the idea of Nobutada leading. He's kind of a little cringe. How about we make Nobutada's son, a.k.a. Nobunaga's grandson, the heir? Everyone's like, uh, isn't he like two years old? And this man, well, this boy, this baby's name is uh, Hide Nobu. So Hide Nobu literally cannot rule because he is two years old. But So it's a Tutankhamun situation. But Hideyoshi has a plan. By instilling the baby, he can basically just rule through the baby. Yeah. Because, I mean, he would just, obviously, the baby is going to defer. They're going to defer responsibilities and ruling power to the next guy. Yeah, and Hideyoshi, you know, did technically save the city, so he is kind of like the big dog right now. (laughs) He takes out a scroll and megaphone. Attention all of Japan. Nap time. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> the Emperor of Japan would like to say that he is infuriated that this square hole will not go into this triangle peg or whatever. the. F- Listen, I don't know, Alex. It's been a long time since I was two years old. I don't remember how those things work. <laughs> Pretty much. So so Hideyoshi is you know basically the fucking Shogun now. So during this time that he's going to be Shogun, he's got to deal with some shit. He's, a lot of people are rebelling because they... Don't like the idea of him just kind of swoosing on in. And there's those fucking warrior monks again. Showing up, just being fucking asshole non-samurai goons again. So he's, he's dealing with all that shit, you know, on his left and on his right. Then Iyasu shows up. Now, Iyasu was buddies with Nobunaga. Now, they had some rough patches, but as a whole, they were basically allies the whole fucking way through till his death, you know? So Iyasu's yeah. like, whoa, 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 whoa there, Hideyoshi. You're the sandal guy. Who the fuck do you think you are sitting on that fucking chair? It should be me. And Hideyoshi's like, whoa there, whoa there, whoa there. I'm the Vegeta, and you're kind of a Yamcha. You're actually, you're more like a, you're like a TN. You don't even have the novelty of Yamcha. (laughs) Yes, pretty much. So, so Hideyoshi's like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold it, hold it. Iyasu, wait, buddy, let's be real here. If me and you go to war right now, we're both going to get totally fucked over. And he pulls him in close. And everyone else around us is just going to take us over. And Tokugawa Iyasu is like, hmm. He's like, looks left, he looks right. He's like, hmm. You know what? You actually kind of have a point with that. He's like, listen, Iyasu, listen. I'm going to just be Shogun still. But listen, just trust me on this one. If you just let me do my thing, I'll make sure that you guys don't have to worry about anything. And Iyasu's like, really now? Hideyoshi gives him a deal. That if he lets him be Shogun, he will make sure the Tokugawa clan does not need to fight in the in the army for ten whole fucking years. Because you know, once you're a centralized Which, government, you have a centralized <laughs> army. And that's a yeah. pretty, that's and, a pretty uh, sick fucking ten deal. Ten whole years without fighting, considering how much fucking fighting happens in a ten year span. 
How long was this whole conflict with Odo before he uh, he got there? Wasn't it like three years? Well, the the whole the whole civil war itself lasted almost a hundred full straight years. Oda Nobunaga just showed up kind of like within like the middle part of it, and he died when he was like forty something. He was like forty seven, I think, when he died. He was like this has been going on for a very long time. Because as soon as you know one so, guy came to power, other people came in and just you know swooped it in too. It would never stop. Because one guy wanted to come out on top, and you know the, the emperor, because he's still alive, he's still living in there in his little palace. He has no power, he has no army, so no one cares. <laughs> he's just that's right because they're they're becoming quote unquote emperor because they become the head shogun, right? That's what they're all fighting for. Well, no, no, the emperor is the emperor. The shogun is the head of the military, aka the actual leader of the fucking country. So, so like, none of these guys are fighting to become emperor; they're fighting to become shogun. Yes. They want to become okay. Shogun and be the actual, like, leader, lead, the lead warrior in the warrior tribe. That's basically what it is. They want to be the big gorilla in the pack. So. Okay. To, so they want to be the Iyasu. funkiest monkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Iyasu takes the deal. He's like, yeah, all right, that, that's totally fucking cool. I'm cool. I'm cool with doing nothing for 10 fucking years. I'm fucking old. Fuck this. So. He fucks off back to his land, and Hideyoshi now gets to fucking be the emperor without anyone having to worry about anything. And his, he really wants to just end this shit. This has been going on for almost 100 straight years, like I just said. He just wants all of it done. He wants a nice, strong central government. He wants to stop any other goddamn rebellions and civil wars from breaking out. And of course, he wants to make sure nobody can potentially dethrone his ass. So, first thing on his list of things to do... Let's get some taxes going, because they haven't actually had taxes for a very long time. The government actually doesn't have any money right now. So, you're probably wondering, how the fuck did that work? Well, it didn't, that's why everything was going to shit. Because <laughs> the the original government, the shogunate, fell apart during the, the Onin War a long time ago. So though everyone in their own little provinces have been collecting their own taxes for their own daimyo, and they just came kind of hoarding their own money. They haven't been giving it back to the shogunate. Yeah. So, first things first... Let's go get that money back. So when you, you roll up with a whole army, you know, put your fucking guns and your swords at them. Yeah, you know, everyone kind of agreed to just give give them their fucking money. So. So he got all of that fucking shit organized very, very quickly. But there was one other thing he had to do with that, though. See, going over to each lord and just asking for money is, is pretty easy enough. But how much how, how much does he tax for each province? Because everyone's a little bit different, you know? So. He, did, yeah. he was the first like, fucking guy to actually go out and survey the whole fucking country. Because up until this point, everyone was just kind of winging it. You got a, you got a lot of land, uh, well, 10%, uh, 12%. But he actually went out there, he's like, okay, you have farmland, you have industry, you have nothing. So, I mean, if I tax you at 15%, I'm not gonna, I'm just, you're just gonna try and kill me. So, let's, let's fix that, let's nip that in the fucking bud. Exactly. So he would go to like this province is like way richer, so he'll tax this one more. This one's way poorer, he'll tax this one, one, one less. He judged their wealth based on how much rice each area could produce, by the way, if you're wondering his little metric there. Which was, you know, again, okay. this is the late 1500s, that's pretty much how you would do it. So, another thing that was really important, the, 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 the tiny bit, is that each temple, well, I guess the Warrior Monk temples and the daimyo of each area had exemptions from taxes. Yeah, no, fuck you. Give me your fucking money. Ah. Put, put a fucking gun at them. <laughs> they lost all of their exemptions, so they're basically just like everyone else now. So, everyone was kind of going with this with actually very little conflict because Hideyoshi at this point just had so much fucking power. Because the only person who, 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 who the only other guy who had like a lot of power at this point, because remember, Oda has kind of, you know, been bulldozing through every clan up until here. So everyone's kind of submitting to the Oda and, you know, the centralized government now. The only person who could ever potentially have an army is Ieyasu. Huh, that's weird that I mentioned that, isn't it? Anyway, moving back to what H Hiyoshi was doing. So another thing he wanted to do is stop any other civil wars from, ha from happening. So let's get rid of everyone's guns and swords. He ooh, goes to ooh, each, ooh. each village and each province. Remember, he just surveyed the whole place. He knows where everyone is. And he takes away all of their weapons. All of them. He gets everybody's sword, even like the little knives, everything that could potentially be like a weapon and threaten him, you know, other than farming equipment. Yoink! Take that right, right from him. That would never happen in this country, by the way. <laughs> Out of my cold, fucking dead hands. That would that would spark a civil war here. But this went through without a single goddamn complaint. 
I'm Honestly, curious how that happened. This is how many years into the fighting is this? This is like 100 years. This is this is like, like almost 90. Oh, OK. OK, so this is way at the end. People are probably just fucking sick of it. They're like, OK, this guy actually seems like there's the Oda clan seems fucking stable. Yeah, sure, fine. And I mean, you can't really say no. I mean, they're going to take it no matter what. I mean, they, they, do, they do roll up with a bunch of goons. What are you, you going to do? You get peasant go against like five samurai dudes in armor. But yeah, I mean, I guess that I mean, that's it. It's just got to be, you know, by force. And then Jesus Christ, can we just fucking stop killing each other? I just want to I just want to grill for God's sake. Oh, I should also mention that when he sent out the guys to uh, survey everything with their little like, you know, little scrolls or little book books and shit. He, they, they came with a full armed force behind them, so no one would fuck with them. Okay. This yeah. is this is this, this is uh, Warren States Japan. Everyone had to be packing a bunch of fucking heat to get anything done. So so he took all of the weapons and he actually did a really interesting little thing, a little ancient politics right here. He melted all of them down into a big ass statue of the Buddha. Okay, that's actually that's actually kind of that sounds like something I do with like a fucking fantasy game. Get out of here, dude. Well, I mean, if he kept them, he'd seem like a, like an asshole hoarding all the weapons, you know? He had to do something yeah, to get I mean, rid of I them. I understand yeah. why he did it, but it's just like, that's the kind of thing that, like, if you're playing in an MMO and there's, like, a China or Eastern-inspired area, like, that's what would happen. Like, you would find a giant Buddha statue made out of swords. <laughs> I mean, it technically would have just been iron because, you know, he melted them down. But you get the idea. Another thing he did is he made a caste system. Now, you are, you're homestuck. You know what those are. Oh, man, I sure do love them. So was there not a caste system before this or was it just kind of an unofficial, you know, you like, you know, peasant, whatever. You're a peasant, loser, citizen, whatever. Kind of. It was it was really it was really free ball in it. Like because he had the daimyos. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, here's the thing. Anybody could technically become a daimyo. All you needed was like a bunch of swords and a bunch of guys to listen to you. Right. Remember, when the, when the first war broke out, a hundred guys were all claiming to be Shogun, right? Before it all started getting whittled down. Like, technically speaking, anybody could do anything. In fact, Mr. Hideyoshi himself was a peasant. You might have forgotten that part from there. He was a peasant, rose up to being a shoe guy, then rose up to being an architect. Now he's the fucking Shogun. He literally went up and promoted himself all the way up to the fucking top. Foot but, by foot, he made his way up. Yeah, and I guess he just hated the idea of other people doing that, so he made a you know, ch -ch gun to everyone's head. Okay, so if you're a peasant, you're a fucking peasant. You're gonna stay here, you're gonna farm this shit, alright? Samurai, you're a fucking samurai. You're not going anywhere down or anywhere up. Here's your fucking sword, here's your fucking armor, do your fucking thing. Everyone was divided into those fucking things. And for whatever reason, merchants were below peasants, which I thought was really interesting. Huh. Yeah, they were seem as less as uh, far the farmers that made the food. But anyway. I mean, I guess if you're looking at it, you're like, oh, they're only they're quote unquote only trading things. They're not putting in the hard work to do yada yada yada. Anyway, I'm assuming this does not last very long. No, actually, it does. This caste system Shut up. stays from like the 15, 1580s. All the way to the to 1800s. the 1970s. No, until 1871. You know, when oh. we showed up and told them to stop doing what they were doing, this literally lasts until the other countries came in and told Japan to stop being fucking uh, <laughs> stuck in a time warp. Japan, stop being so fucking weird. Legitimately, they were doing this until they were forced otherwise. So, 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 so. There's another thing, another thing that he, uh, he did here. This is really interesting. So remember how, he, how I said he hated rebellions, right? He really wanted to make sure no one, you know, challenged him. Those peasants were forbidden to travel in specific spots. All they could do was stay on their land and then, like, go to town to sell their shit and then go back. That was the rule. They had to just farm. Ooh. They are locked to where they are. They can't move and get a new farm. They are stuck in whatever land they're born with. They just got to sit there and there. Bad rice day. Sucks to be. You can't move. This is your fucking farm, bitch. You you were born here. You get to die here. I don't like that. Well, it was to make sure that no one fucking uh, rose up and did shit. Like, remember, he rose up and he did all this. He doesn't want anyone else doing that either. He's worried about another peasant being just like him. Get, getting big fucking dreams and ideas. So, He's locking the door behind him. Pretty much. He, he he's in Fall Guys. He's the first guy through and made and fucked everyone else over on fucking DoorDash. So, one big problem with this though 
with the, with the caste system, I should say. Not, not the landlocking. That surprisingly worked well. The samurai. He has an entire caste system of warriors. These guys, for the past 100 years, were bred to be slashed and s- smashed, slashed and slammed. These guys are fucking jacked as <laughs> shit and only know how to fight. They don't know how to fucking farm. They don't know how to fucking write books. They just like to hit things with sticks and swords and also shoot guns. What the fuck do these guys do if they're not fighting anymore, right? If, if he has technically unified all of Japan, now what? These guys are just sit there, and they're going to get bored. And a bored warrior, that's a threat. Because that bored warrior might decide to get some other bored warriors and get rid of him, right? He can't have that shit. Hey, what if we had a new bad guy? What if, all right, you know, you know Japan, you know, he gets his megaphone. Hey, guys, hear me out on this one, all right? So you know how we were all fighting each other? What if we just, like, fucked up China? Huh? huh? That sounds pretty good, huh? You know, China, China's pretty big. That's a that's a lot of enemies, technically. That's a big place. That's a lot to keep them busy for, like, you know, thousands of years, technically. Hey. Now, okay, okay. Was there literally anything that China was doing to them? Like, was China trying to raid Japanese islands? Ted, China was literally minding its own fucking business in the 15 fucking hundreds. Like, remember, this, <laughs> this is ancient time. This is old times, dude. Like, people weren't, like, weren't harassing each other on other countries. They were busy trying to not starve themselves, you know? Everyone was just minding their own fucking business at this point. Like, a few hundred years ago... So China's... <laughs> all the Chinese people are just kind of minding their own business, looking at this giant western border, this giant golden light that separated them from the rest of the world. And then China <laughs> finds this little gap in the wall, or Japan finds it, and just swooses in there. Yeah. So like a couple hundred years ago, like the Mongols came to fuck up Japan, but that was that was a while ago. Like this is the 1500s. But before you can go to China, you gotta land somewhere closer. You gotta go to Korea first. Now. For those who have listened for a while, we actually covered this briefly. We're going to have some crossover now. One of our really old noise boys is I was just talking about Korean history because Ted was uh, forgetting how to do a podcast, so I had to save his ass. So, <laughs> Still so haven't might, remembered. So you might remember this, is that Hideyoshi makes a big order. All right, everybody, let's go invade Korea. Let's, like, literally, let's just be evil. There is no justification. Let's just go fuck him up for no reason. So they get their boats, which are shitty boats, get over there, and they just start fucking shit up. Because they spent for the past 100 years fighting each other. They're strong as shit. Like, they, they spent 100 years killing boars in fucking Elwood Forest. They're all at max fucking levels right now. <laughs> They're going to fucking... Lo- imagine if Lumbridge... Oh, sorry. What was that place in... in, in uh, the RuneScape? Falador Massacre. Yeah, imagine the Falador Massacre right then in there. That was basically what happened in motherfucking Korea. So <laughs> this this is a whole story of itself. I'm gonna you know kind of talk about it briefly because I mentioned it before. This is when you know everyone's getting fucked. They push up, and this is where the the divide between North and South Korea begins to form really early on, where South Korea get totally fucked. Well, the rich people ran ran off to North Korea and asked China for help, and they stayed safe. That, that's that's where the borders like initially started. That's where the rift began, right? Hundreds of years ago. Interesting. But also in Korea. A hero rose named Admiral Motherfucking Yi. Admiral Yi, whose story is inc- incredibly romanticized, so I'm pretty sure most of it is bullshit, but he made his own you know, unique ship, the turtle ship, which could spit fire that I told you about. You know, they had an ancient ass flamethrower on it, and it was armored up, up like yeah. fuck. And the Japanese ships, because you know, they, they were doing land combat for 100 years, they don't actually know how to sail that well, so they just got fucking rocked. So. Well, the, the Korean Navy destroyed all of their backup. Eventually, once China showed up to destroy Japan, they were cut off now because of the Navy, and they just got completely washed and destroyed. So Admiral Yi, you know, I'm pretty sure he's taking a little too much credit, but he basically single-handedly saved Korea. That, that's how the story goes, anyway. But this... Yeah. okay, this, that's pretty... Yeah. Yeah, and then he, he has his own fucking story, his own books. Like, he's, he's an important character, but I don't want to distract too hard, but he's actually really cool. But Admiral Yi... Basically, you know, summarizes it, saves Korea. So now, Japan's kind of fucked right now because they had everyone on there. That was all the clan's biggest, baddest warriors all just got fucked either at sea or at land when once China showed up. Everyone's kind of walked, you know, they're walking back, limping home, you know, all covered in bruises and shit. Man, sure is good to be Tokugawa Ieyasu and never had to fucking fight in that war, isn't it? After all, he was exempt from from service. Oh my god, yeah. Oh man, everyone's sure looking weak right about now. 
Yeah, I think it's about oh, no. time to shine. So, everyone's looking really bad right now, and it's 1598. It's been a few years. Now, Tokugawa is, you know, he's not doing anything yet, but he's, like, he's walking at the edge of the fucking, like, cage, looking at all the, looking at the sweet children ready to pounce on him like a lion, right? Walking back and forth. Like a fucking animal, just waiting for the waiting for the 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 moment. So he his eyes are like looking over to the edge where the previous four emperors or shogun have just been tossed off the cliff. Just hmm. <laughs> hmm. He's like pr- like you see him in his room. He's like practicing throwing just a, and a one and a hoop and a hoop. So so Hideyoshi does eventually die. Surprisingly, not from, from foul play. He's just getting kind of old, and you know he, he was originally a peasant, so he's not super-duper healthy. And he dies, and only person who can rule now is his five-year-old son. Obviously, he's too young to do that, so they get five daimyo together, five bigwigs to protect him and help rule the country while you know he until he becomes of age. Now, we did an episode on Ivan the Terrible. We all know how well this is going to go. So they don't give a fuck about raising this kid. They immediately all wanted to take over the country for themselves. Now, out of the five big They didn't dogs, even give this child a pair of sandals. <laughs> here's your sandals, Squiddo. Here's here's a thing of rice. All right, fuck out of here. So <laughs> they give him they give him one pair of sandals full of rice and then they lock him in the broom closet. Yes. So poor, poor little Hideyoshi Jr. Yeah, fuck him. He's out. He's not going to matter for a little while. So, oh, we- OK, so I thought he was just going to die. No, they're not going to kill him because that would make them look bad. Remember, politics. If he dies at their hands, after after the Shogun just made this whole big speech about how, like, here are my rules, here are my edicts, please protect my son, Ugh, and he dies, if the first person to actually kill him would be a huge asshole and everyone can dogpile and make him the villain, right? Remember, you can't be a Kenshi Mitsuhide. You can't make yourself the bad guy. You gotta always have justifications for your actions, even if they're kind of flimsy. Ancient politics right there, 101. So... Now, out of the five big dogs, the five big dudes who got to rule over and, you know, protect the kid, there's the biggest of the big dogs, the richest of the big dogs, and the most powerful of the big dogs, Tokugawa Ieyasu. Because after all, he didn't have to fucking fight. And he's been, he's been one of the main characters of this whole story this whole time. He's the only one left. Because, you know, Sandal Guy's gone, Yasuke's gone, fucking Akechi's gone, he's dead, Oda's gone. All we got left is Tokugawa Ieyasu. So, Hideyoshi had all these rules in place that nobody could fuck with any all, all the systems that he set in place. Everything can just keep going on when his son becomes of age. So they immediately fuck with all of those. Immediately, everyone just tells that to go fuck off. So let's enter a brand new character. Ishida Mitsunari. Ishida... Okay, hold on. Let me guess. Everyone's had some kind of fucking gimmick. Does this guy have like a fishbowl on his head or something? What's He's this guy's a- gimmick? So he's the book guy. That's his gimmick. He's an admin. He's not a samurai. He doesn't have a cool armor set. He's, he's, he looks like the fucking guy from Mulan, right? The hat and the robe. But they would give him like the thumbs up when, he, when he's shaking the guy's hand. He's the book guy. He's just a nerd. He's got his big dorky like swirly anime glasses, right? So he comes in and he's like, all right, guys, I'm the administrator here. I'm here to you know, make sure all the rules are being followed. <clears throat> all right. So, uh. He, he, he's the, the, I can't say bookkeeping, I guess scroll keeping guy, he's the financing guy, the little Chinese calculator, right? He's, I guess, the 1500s yeah. version of a secretary. So, he was making sure everyone's following the rules. He's like, all right, uh, Mr., uh, let's see, Mr. Jerry, all right, you're doing it good, 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 good. Uh, Mr. Ieyasu, um, uh, so, how are you doing following these laws uh, and shit? Are you making sure that the uh, young boy is being well taken care of? Yasu's like, you know, kicked back with sunglasses on, like smoking, you know, whew, blows it right in his face. Says, nah, fuck it. Fuck you. I don't need to do shit. And I'm sure Ishida, you know, you know, spiced that up a little bit. But Yasu was, according, uh, allegedly, being really disrespectful during this whole, like, bit. So, Ishida didn't like that. Ishida didn't like that at all. So Ishida started plotting against Mr. Ieyasu because if this guy, like, say say this guy you know, becomes the power, he, he's fearing that he's going to you know, kill the kid and become the new shogun, right? So if he does that, yeah. you don't want some disrespectful asshole running the country. No, 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 no. Fuck that. Ishida's a loyalist. So he gets a plan. Tries to have him assassinated. He tries to get some ninja to go kill Ieyasu, but also a backup plan. In case it fails, he's going to blame the second biggest clan, the Maeda clan. 
for all of it. He's gonna he's gonna make it say like 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 dear Mr. Ninja, please kill Tokugawa Ayasu. Signed Mr. Maeda, and then you know hand off the note. That's his genius plan. And so, now to the to, now he's still technically he's related still to the Oda clan. So I wonder if the ninjas are still like now nah, we're not gonna fuck with him or not. So it's funny you say that, Ted. I'm glad you were keeping along because remember what I mentioned earlier. Ayasu has basically been on every single ninja's good side. So this plan immediately backfires, because once the ninja reads the note, the ninja just immediately turns it over to Ayasu and says, yo, this guy was plotting against you, dude. This guy's fucking wild. You gotta get rid of him. (laughs) But also, not only did he have all the ninja clans in his pocket, but he had basically everyone else and all the other daimyos in his pocket, too. Because remember, he was the only guy left with an army and, and any money. He's the only one who didn't fight in the Korean War. So everyone was, like, in debt to him at this point. So everyone was just going along with what he said. So not only did this plan get discovered, but also the false accusation part got found out, too. So Iyasu... Oof, yikes. So Iyasu gets a retainer to go over and talk to Mr. Maeda, you know, Mr. You know, Mr. Like, head of the clan. His name is uh, Toshie. And he's like, yo, this guy was trying to plot against you, man. And my is like, thank you for finding that out, and thank you for you know believing in me that my claim would never do anything wrong. I pledge my loyalty to you forever. And he he's a very old man, so he does actually die like a couple weeks later, but then his son takes over. But that pledge still in effect. So Ishida's nice. plan backfired so hard. Iyasu just has more allies now. Uh. <laughs> so during Toshie's funeral, they get a good idea. Hey, you know to honor you know Mr. Maeda. Let's kill Ashida at the funeral. So they grab him and try to fucking just shake the shit out of him. But he fucking fights him off and he runs for it. And he, know who he runs to? He runs to Ayasu for help. Uh-oh. So <laughs> you're, it's me, Roger A. Murabri. I came back from your, your humble spy master. There's a plot by Roger A. Murabri to stab you. So he gets down on his knees and he says, please, Ayasu, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to plot against you. I, I got a little drunk with power there. Please, I would never do anything like that. It was a typo. It was a typo. <laughs> I'm the funny book, man. Look at me go. I got glasses. I got funny little sandals. I got IBS. Look at me. I'm a character. So he asks his, so, so he's like, please, your leech, have mercy. And he asks his, like, not until you scrubbed all the floors in Kyoto. Then we could talk about mercy. And then he cut his head off. No, no, no. But seriously, what he actually did is, is he granted him mercy. He actually let him, he let him go. He actually said to Ishida, nah, that's cool. Ishida was like, oh, thank you, my lord. And he started kissing his feet and sucking on his toes. And he fucked up. <laughs> no, don't suck on my toes. You're thinking of Hideyoshi. <laughs> so, so he walks out. He's like, whew, I can't believe I got out of that one. Turns the corner. All right, time for a plan B. So he this imme- little fucker. <laughs> he immediately. This fucking wormwood. Literally. This is what the dude. Remember in Lord of the Rings where they go to Rohan, where all the horses are. That's in the flat plain. And there's like the old ass king. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. They enter that. in there. That's Gandalf the Grey, my lord. He's not welcome. Literally. <laughs> they kick him out and he immediately starts plotting again. God damn it. So. Time for plan this B. This fucking well, all right, Alex. Hold on. What was the name of the kid in uh, in uh, recess? Oh, the little the you little, the little rat kid, the snitch. Yeah, I don't remember his name. I just remember him, him being the snitch. Randall. I, Randall. Yeah, it was Randall. So, so it's the six. It's now officially sixteen hundred, and Ishida fucks off. Yo, he suspiciously disappears, but he'll be back. Don't worry. Then suspiciously. The Asugi show back up. Remember those guys the, the, with, with Mr. Kenshin, the, the, the war god Bishamonten reincarnated with his catapult and shit, who just kind of up and died for no reason? Well, his okay. heir is now older now. M- Mr. Kage Katsu. Mr. Kage here, he's got a new plan. He's going to just conquer Japan himself. He's going to do the complete thing that, that Hideyoshi was trying to stop. <laughs> he's just going to fuck everything up. Listen, and, guys, and, I got a plan. <laughs> Give me your land. Time for a new civil war. So, Iyasu... This lasted, what, this peace? This quote-unquote peace, if you don't count the Korean War, lasted for, like, what, 15 minutes? Yeah, before just everyone about. started dying? Well, just about. Everyone was going along with it until, uh, you know, the Asugi just out of nowhere started being really aggro. I wonder if someone tipped them off or something. So, Iyasu's like, oh my fucking god. So he gets, he gets a goon. Not a ninja this time. He gets a, a different goon, a samurai goon, a man named Tori Motodada. 
Now, Tori here is actually a really, really old friend who's been kind of like a silent character in the background. He actually met Mr. Tori when they were both hostages at the start of the story back with the Imigawa clan. Remember that? Oh, that's how this whole thing started before he became the clan leader? When he was still a Matsudaira boy? Yeah. So, they, they, they talked. So, they, they, they planned out this little thing on a map, and they're like, okay, listen. If the Isuki really want to fight, they're going to come through here this is, and, and attack Kyoto from here. Mr. Tori, your castle is right here. You're the last line of defense. And Tori's like, listen, I'm fucked. I have 2k goons, and there's no way you're going to get goons over to reinforce me in time. Just hold out in the city, and I will literally slow them down so hard they won't be able to fight back. I like, dude, you, you don't have to do this. You can just, do, bro, you can, and, and he puts, Tori puts his hand on ES to show that says, bro, I would fucking sell my soul for your ass. Uh, again, probably romanticized, but he goes out to his castle, and here come the Yasuke with 40,000 goons up against 2,000 goons in a castle. Now, yikes. They're fucked, but they make them work for that W. They hold that castle out for 10 full fucking days. 10 days to buy Tokugawa Ieyasu enough time to rally a bunch of goons to protect Kyoto. And that is exactly the amount of time he needed. Fucking optimized. So, eventually the castle does fall, and they finally push over to go fucking fight at Kyoto. So, they're not going to fight in the capital city because that would kill a bunch of civilians. They go meet up at this place called Sekigahara. It's a big river with these cool mountains around. Basically looks like every other battlefield at this point. You probably are probably thinking. <laughs> uh, they both show up and they have an even amount of goons. 80,000, 80,000. Now the Ishida... Oh, qu- spoilers. Ishida's back in the Isugi. He's the one leading everybody. <gasps> yep, it was Mr. Ishida. It was him all along, Austin. I knew Ishida. it. I knew it. Ishida's plot with Kagi Katsu over here. And he's, you know, he's the one in the back of the army, you know, plotting his hands, rubbing together, being Wormworth. Well, you know, all the other guys are taking the fall. So, they get the little things. It starts raining like crazy. It's muddy. It's shitty. It's foggy. It's fucking October, so it's fucking cold as shit. But the sun rises, and they finally begin to go fighting. They just start beating the shit out of each other. So, the sheet is, you know, up on his little horse, you know, surveying everything with little binoculars. And he's actually starting to win. He's actually beating the shit out of the Tokugawa at this point. Even, even with that 10-day lead, they, they're still getting through. But there's a problem. You see, Ishida isn't a samurai. He's a book guy, remember? So uh, some of the other samurai generals don't want to do what he tells them on the grounds that he's not as cool as they are. Uh, They're going to end up throwing this. They're going to have their Trindamir go seven and one in lane and then keep trying to split push while they need him for a team fight. Unironically, yes. So... So they're waiting. He's like, all right, guys, pushing over on that flank. And they're like, yeah, what's in it for us? Bitch, we're going to win. He's like, yeah, but like, see, we're like warriors and you're like a, you're like a nerd. But like, bro, like, bro, I don't feel like it's, it's the for an equinox. I don't feel like charging the battle today. So <laughs> enter another clan. Now, there's these guys called the Kobo Yakawa. I'm just going to call them the Kobos because it's a mouthful. We get the Kobos up uh-huh. here on this hill. The Kobos have 16,000 goons, and they're just that's sitting up there. That's a lot of goons. That's, that's a lot of goons. Remember, it's 80-80, and they're 1,600. They're, 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 they're not doing anything. Yo, Ishida's like, hey, yo, charge in right now. And the Kobayakawa, they just stand up there looking. He sends, a letter, he sends a letter up there. He's like, hey, what are you guys doing up here? Can you go help us fight? And the leader is like, no, get out of here. Sends him away. Okay, so a few hours pass, because this, this is a long battle, right? So, sends another guy up there. Like, okay, is, are you guys just gonna like, stand up here? Are you gonna like, like contribute to this fucking team? Are you just gonna AFK? And they're like, nope, get out of here. So they're, they're sitting up there, menacingly. The, the, the Ishida, like, you know, Ishida's goons are like looking up there, kind of like worried about them. The Tokugawa goons are up there, like, kind of worried about them. They're just looking at them. They're just standing there. What are they up to? This reminds me. This reminds me of way, way earlier. Remember where the guy set up all the fake. Uh, the fake horse shit the on top army. of the, the... Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what Oda did. But th- these are a real army. These guys are really there. They're, they, you know, people can see them. They're right there. They're they're real. So what's their plan? Well, you see, Kobe Akawa is actually weighing his options right now. To see which side he should help. Yeah, he's looking left and right because, like, 
the Ishida, you know, Mr. Ishida, he's a pretty wealthy guy. He did promise that if they won, they would get a lot of good fucking shit, a lot of money and a lot of land. But Ieyasu, though, Ieyasu helped them out back in the past. A long time ago, Oda tried to get rid of all of their land, said, no, fuck you, it's, you know, mine now. But Ieyasu was like, whoa, whoa buddy, you know, respect, respect the Kobayakawa, let, let them do their thing. And he gave it back to him. I'm sorry, it was Hideyoshi, my bad. Hideyoshi tried to take all the okay. land away, and then when Tokugawa came, came, he gave it all back. So they're like, hmm, this guy might help us, but this guy has proven to help us. Hmm, money, hmm, hmm. There was this one thing he remembers. One well, one time, a long time ago, that Tad, Ishida and Kobe Kawa go way, way, way back. And Yoshida deleted the saves on Mr. Kobe Kawa's memory card, and he's still pissed about that. <laughs> so I think I know who I'm gonna side with. As soon as the Tokugawa pull out their guns and fire, the Kobe Kawa go like, "All right, boys, let's charge." Into Yoshida! Yeah! And they fucking go in and they backstab the backstabber and just beat the shit out of that entire army. That's what they get for deleting his Animal Crossing save where he had all the and all the regular Nintendo games unlocked. So, so everyone, everyone is like, well, we're fucked. It's over. So remember those samurai that weren't listening to Yoshida? They decided to defect also because, hey, if we defect right now, maybe we'll get in good with the Shogun. So they just start backstabbing <laughs> too. And it just all goes to fucking hell and becomes a fucking free for all. So Ishida's like, ah, shit. So he tries to run off. But they stop him. They get him. They kill him. He, he's gone. Ishida's dead. It's all over. Now, technically speaking, there is literally... Literally nobody left. Nobody could possibly, possibly fucking rally troops and fight them back. The only other big clan left was was them, and they were being rallied up by by that you know by Wormsworth there. So they're gone. It's over. Nobody He's... except little Harry Potter stuck under the cupboard from earlier. No. He's gone. It's Damn fine. It. He, he doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> they just forgot about him. It's just a skeleton he, in the closet. He, he starved. He's dead. He's over. <laughs> just, oh, all right. Oh, shit. The Oda boy. I almost forgot. They, they open up. He's just, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just a little skeleton. Like, oops. <laughs> they just gently close the door. <laughs> so, so he walks back to Kyoto, you know, head held high. You know, the emperor himself shows up. Because remember, he's always been there. He's literally been there this whole, like, a century. He comes over, does a little, like, little ceremony, pats him on the shoulder and says, All right, everybody. Pulls out the squirrel megaphone. Mr. Tokugawa Ieyasu is now the official, real, big dog shogun of Japan. And we're all one unified country once more. And Ieyasu's like, hell yeah, I did it. He looks over, he sees the fucking JoJo's part three ending with like fucking Hideyoshi and like Nobunaga's ghost giving him thumbs up in the fucking sky. And he finally became shogun <laughs> for two whole years. Do you know what happened to him in two years, Tad? Uh, killed, killed by a ninja? No, he retired. He didn't die at all. He didn't. He didn't challenge nobody. He didn't fucking die of illness. He wasn't poisoned. He's just like, well, that was a fun run. All right, son. He gets his son Tokugawa Hidetada, gives him the sword and the funny hat, and says, "It's all up to him now." And he walks back home and just chills out in his fucking retirement home, just kicking back with his sunglasses on. Now you're probably wondering why would he do that? Why would he come so far only to give it all up? So here's the thing, Tad. We're gonna talk about ancient politics once more. This is the interesting part okay. to, for me, anyway. I, I think this is, this is really cool. This is such a big brain fucking move. What has happened every single time a leader has died? Their son is taken over, right? And then when their son takes over, everything goes to shit again. Yes, we we've seen with uh, the Takeda. Remember when Takeda two took over and he was just a way shittier leader? You know? And yeah, Takeda. Oh, because yeah. he wasn't trained at all. Yeah, or remember when when Mr. when Oda Nobunaga's dad died, Mr. Nobuhide died, and nobody liked Nobunaga and started a mini civil war in the Oda, Oda clan. Whatever, yeah. whatever you just say, hey guys, this is the new the new leader now. Nobody likes that. But what he did is he put the guy and his son in power while still being alive. So technically speaking, if anything went wrong, they could just come by and ask him. Right? He he could technically fix it. But. By letting him be in power, he lets people get used to him and him getting experience. It is. It's a good play. If he does at some point die, there won't be a huge upheaval like, oh, I like, you know, Iyasu better than he taught. No, fuck this. No, no, no. I mean, he's been here for a while. We're kind of used to him. He's pretty good. And so 
when Ieyasu does finally die, which is about 10 years later, he has a funeral, it's a big deal, but there's no rebellions, there's no bullshit, there's no doubt. Because Hidetada has been ruling for 10 years now, and he's been doing a pretty good job. No reason, you know, why ruin a good thing. For the first time in 35 years in Japan, no one would, no one acted inappropriate at a funeral, or killed someone at a funeral, or tried to kill someone at a funeral. Yes, there's only one final piece of this puzzle there's one last thing they gotta take care of before this is all finally done and the, and the whole civil war is like officially you know lit on it shut done so hideyoshi so they have to still... find the ark of the covenant yes no it's hideyoshi's son he technically is still alive and he's way over there to suck a castle and he's just sitting there so the tokugawa clan doesn't like that hideyoshi's up there he hasn't bugged them, but he could potentially bug them in the future. And that's kind of making them like, like, like dig fucking like claw marks into their fucking chair. They don't like the potential threat. So they try to bait him out of, 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 the, of the lane, into the river, so they could go fucking gank him. But he's like, no, nah, dude, I don't have any fucking problems. I don't fucking care. It's like, okay, but did you want to fight us maybe a little bit? Like, come on, come on. Nah, I don't feel like it. Come on. I did to give us some justification to come and fuck you up. And, you know, he's like, Nah, I don't feel like it. So they potentially forge evidence against him. They take a bell that he wrote, Tokugawa is a stupid, dumb idiot on, which probably they <laughs> just wrote themselves and said, uh, hey, look, that's disrespecting the Shogun. Uh, yeah, it's justification. Uh, don't, don't look too into it. And they just pull out their swords and go and siege the fucking castle. And they, they destroy the castle oh and God. kill him. And uh, he's dead now. <laughs> then now... <laughs> this is 1615 that they finally fucking kill him and get everything done with. So with that, they are finally rid of the Hideyoshi clan, which means the Tokugawa clan can finally rule in goddamn peace. And that is the end of the Warring States period. You thought it was going to end on a nice note, but no, fuck it. It, it ends with one last political bullshit into power. But with it that, ends with them it's forging over. evidence to kill someone who was like, what, were they young? Uh, he was he was like in his like 30s. He wasn't he was that young. But he, okay, so. he literally was minding his own business. But the fact that he was related to Hideyoshi meant he could potentially say that he was, you know, the Shogun's heir. They didn't like the potential threat he posed. So, gotta kill him. What a shame. And then from that point forward, Japan has never been involved in any kind of military conflict ever again. So what's interesting, though, is that with this, and you, you've probably seen the Bill Wirtz video about the history of Japan. It's really popular basically the new rule was is that no one's allowed in or out of the country now like it's they're locked they're they now get stuck in what i call the time warp where now japan stays in with their robes their swords their bows and their shitty guns and their caste system for the next 200 like 50 fucking years until america comes in with the gunboats and says let us inside it's like cuba cuba um they, uh, you know, when they got into the lockdown at the U.S., they had a bunch of 60s cars up until, like, the late 90s. You would go there and you would see these, like, metal 1960s, like, you know you know how the 60s car looks where they got, like, all, like, the, the curves and shit? Yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. There's no car fucking manufacturing plants on Cuba, and if you can't import new ones, you can get in parts, but you can't fucking get new cars. So, it's kind of like that, where they just... You're stuck. If you don't engage at the outside world, you don't grow and you don't evolve past a certain point. Exactly. There's a fun little bit about that, too, if I, if I may. Uh, I remember reading a thing where those guys came on, you know, the gunboats, the boats with guns, the gunboats, and landed in, in Japan. One of the guys said, and I love this quote, it was like stepping out of a fucking time machine. <laughs> Verbatim. Just some American low-class sailor. But he goes there, and he's, like, looking around. because He's in, like, a suit, right? It's the it's 1871. They have, like, suits now, right? He's in, like, a suit. You're, like, looking left, looking right. There's people walking around with fucking, like, wooden sandals and carrying fucking katanas and shit. Like, he's like, what <laughs> like, the Did fuck? I just drop myself off at a fucking renaissance fair? Whoa. They walk into, like, whoa, dude. That fall hit you. You hit that on the ground pretty hard. 1800s? What are you talking about? The show... America? Bro, the show... <laughs> The Shogun's here to collect his rice tax. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That, that is the Patreon voted episode for one. 1800s? Gunboats? What are you talking about? We gotta go plan to go kill the Shogun. Okay. We gotta go help forge evidence to go kill, go kill his opposition. <laughs> so that is the Warren States. As you can see, 
That technically speaking took two and a half hours. That's how much fucking shit happens. I was able to cover like 50 years of someone's life in like 45 minutes. This shit has so much shit happening back to back to back, and I still skim skip and skim and skip over some other bits of dialogue and shit. That is how much shit is in here. You really only even covered like four different clans, Takeda, the Oda, the ninjas a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, just yeah. a smattering of everyone else. Well, the ninjas, to be fair, the ninjas were kind of secretive. That was kind of their M.O. They, they, they were just a bunch of fucking assassins and shit. So anyway, uh, that was the Warring States. That took, uh, technically speaking, that took two and a half hours. I had to skip and skim over a couple of details here and there. But, like, it's it's so much happens in 100 years. I've, I've been pretty good with keeping, like, you know, 50 to 70 years in, like, an hour. This shit, like... Guys, you had to vote for the hardest fucking one. There is so much shit that happens. I had to cover so much. And of course, you know, because I'm kind of making things up and to be a little funny and things, I highly recommend you look at the official sources. Uh, there's tons for this period of time because it's like the most romanticized bit of history I think I've ever read next to Sparta. Uh, weeaboos fucking love it. Uh, video games love it. Movies love it. TV shows love it. Anime loves it. Like, it's everywhere. You'll, you'll be able to figure this one out on your own. It's probably as romanticized as like the American Wild West, where it's just like we just make up most of this shit to make ourselves sound like feel really cool about our past. Yeah, like I'm, I'm sure Leo you know, Tori and Tokugawa didn't have a really cool like scene drinking sake together about sacrificing their lives. I'm sure it wasn't that fucking one sided. I'm sure he was trying to bargain his way out of that one in real life. But anyway, anyway, anyway. hope you guys liked it. It was a lot of fun to do. Uh, it was a lot of reading. A lot of watching. Like, fuck, it's a hundred years, Ted. It's a long fucking time of shit going down. Just think about a hundred years in terms of, like, us right now in the United States. We went back a hundred years ago. It's the 20s. That's the Great Depression, like, leading up to World War One. It's a hundred years ago. But, uh, yeah, uh, so, Ted, want me to do the plugs? Uh, if you think you can handle them. All right, I'm just... I just, you know, drink my fucking sake before I stab myself. You got to lead into it with this. Here, I'll, I'll give you the lead in. So, you know, about 100 years ago, you know, we had the Great Depression. Hey, speaking of Great Depressions. Speaking of Great Depressions, you can find the podcast, you know, here on YouTube. And, uh, well, you can't find it on Google Play no more. Uh, are we on YouTube music, Tad? I uh, Probably, I assume. You can find us here on fucking, you know, the Patreon right down there in the description. Uh... Fuck, what else are we on? We're on Google, uh, Spotify. We're on Spotify as well. Nailed it. Uh, is that everything? Okay, there's still, there's one more that you're missing that we're on. Well, Google Play, no, YouTube, Spotify. Uh, uh, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. I don't iTunes. know. iTunes. What's up? iTunes? Oh, right, of course, iTunes. Who the fuck uses iTunes anymore? Uh, you can find us there <laughs> as well. I uh, hope you guys like listening to us. Uh, this was really long-winded, and uh, I actually have a plan. For a more traditional Let Me Tell You About episode, in fact, I have a couple. I have maybe even three that I want to do to take a small break from history. Kind of bring back the old fun bits, you know, for a couple episodes We're, anyway. I hope you guys look forward yeah, to that. Yeah, talking about weird stuff, not necessarily weird historical stuff. Exactly, exactly. All right. but, uh, that's all we got, things? I think. All right, there we go. Well, uh, so uh, thanks for listening, you guys. This is a fun episode. It was a little bit hard to keep track of the names. But I mean, that's just that's just how Japanese names are for us dumb white Americans. So thanks for listening. Uh, we'll check you guys out with the next episode. See ya.